uh, the introduction and we'll get rolling. Does that sound okay, Greg? Whoop. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Southboro School Committee's Capital Planning Subcommittee and the Town of Southboro's Capital Planning School, Re School Research Subcommittee will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the district website at, there's a link cited. Um, so I will call to order the uh, Southboro School Committee Capital Planning Subcommittee meeting of Monday, May 17th, 2021, um, called to order at 4.07 p.m. Same for the Town of Southboro's uh, School Research Subcommittee. Okay. And um, <clears throat> so, uh, although we have action on the minutes listed as the first order of business, um, unless there, there's any objection, we'll move that to the last order of business um, so that we can cover some of the substantive items while we have the most people possible uh, at the meeting. So that brings us, is there any objection to that? Okay, so that brings us to um, our first order of business, which is MSBA update. Sure, so I'd be happy to give a, a quick update on the Mass School Building Authority's um, launch of its core building program. Um, and they opened the window for districts to submit statements of interest. Um, the due date is June 25th. Um, of 2021, and Keith um, and uh, Kathleen Valente and Brian Fantoni um, and a leadership team have been working on developing a statement of interest, um, which we intend to submit um, early June. Um, so that is under review, and we are in a good place in terms of uh, timing and, again, submitting it before the deadline. Just a, a quick reminder that submitting a statement of interest um, does not um, is not a commitment on the town of Southboro or the public schools of Southboro mm -hmm. to do anything other than it allows um, the school district to get in line in terms of a review of M uh, by MSBA's board to see if um, a project of, of Neary School in terms of scope meets its criteria and whether um, it would invite us into the process of um, the next step, which is basically feasibility. Um, we anticipate that if it, once we submit the statement of interest, it will be probably six months, about a half a year before we hear back from MSBA. Um, and if we do get in, invited into the, the process, then we'd move into a feasibility, um, a 200, I think a 290 day process or 270 day process around there, um, looking at more in depth of, of the school building, the needs, um, grade level configurations um, and submitting that information to MSB to then make yet another decision whether it would accept the project um, into its, its core building program. So the first step is the core building program statement of interest, which we are on schedule uh, to submit. I'd be happy to answer any questions and Becky and Keith can also add any details that I may have missed. I, I actually have a question, which I'll just throw out there and then um, if there are any others. So where, could you just clarify? Cause I guess when I think about the process, I'm not totally clear on, um, where in the process does it get figured out what would make sense to do <laughs> to the building? Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to just envision, is that part of the feasibility study? Is that where that gets figured out? Yeah, so once it's once we're invited in, then there's that um, 200, I believe 270 days, is that accurate? Yes. I have 290, so I wanna give myself 20 more days for some reason. <laughs> but it's 270 days. And through that process, um, we have to do a, a thorough analysis of uh, programmatic needs, space needs, not just at Neary, but in terms of our overall 
um, school programming. So grade level configurations would take place within that window of time. And do enrollment projections do, which enrollment projections get used? The ones that we have gotten together or do they do their own projection? So they do their own projection, okay. um, but again, we would have the enrollment projection work that we did to balance out whatever uh, MSBA uh, required. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? Um, uh, maybe this is the, the, sorry. Go ahead, Roger. Roger. Well, I can't, I can't put, I don't know a way to put my hand up on this, uh, you know, on this, just this audio. As I recall, um, even though I know that this doesn't really commit us to anything, as I recall, um, if we put together a plan and we end up getting reimbursement, I think there was, there, there is some kind of requirement that, uh, if you, if, if you, um, if enrollment or something changes and if you potentially go away from that plan then the reimbursement does not uh, come through. I'm just remembering some conversation about this. Yeah, so once we're, we are invited in to the process, um, again, it doesn't mean that we've committed any um, finance or our commitment to moving forward. Um, basically, we, we do a more in-depth study of the building needs and requirements. Um, and at some point during that 270 day window, that's when we um, look to do a more in-depth feasibility study. And that is when we need to get a commitment from the town to, to move forward with that feasibility. Um, it, and again, it does not um, commit MSBA to supporting a project. It's just the next step in the project. project. Um, so there's really no, you know, there's no commitment. So if we get accepted in to, we get invited into the process, um, we could decline. And, um, or what happens typically is that school districts submit statements of interest and it takes a couple years before they're actually invited in to begin. Roger, I'm not okay, sure. Okay, well, thank you. Jason, did you have a question? Yeah, I guess somewhat similar to that question, but more of an extension is, I guess, Greg, are there any other approvals other than the school committee, which my understanding is you already have, like Board of Selectmen? Because I think, do you have to go before them before the end of June with this as well? Yeah, so the statement of interest requires um, signaling. I mean, it's a document that needs to be signed by uh, the Board of Selectmen and the school committee chair. Um, so that is something we will be moving forward with in terms of before we submit that the, uh, statement of interest. Okay, and then I guess the follow-on question to that is thinking forward to the six months that you outlined, right? So you get in the queue in the end of June, right? You know, and we're waiting six months anxiously of, you know, what, what do they think? Knowing that the town has already signaled that they're gonna have a fall town meeting, right? Like if you're gonna need feasibility funds, let's just say we're lucky, we get accepted in, everyone still wants to keep moving forward you're not going to be able to do anything at the fall town meeting, right? Cause you have to wait until you get that acceptance or will you be able to do something or is that something we have to figure out as kind of the months pass? Yeah. I think it's something that we'll want to strategize around um, as, as we proceed, if we do get invited in um, what other school districts have done is they have um, on Warren articles requested funding for a feasibility study. And then if for some reason it doesn't move forward, um, the funding's just not used, if that makes sense. Yeah, so this will lead to a question I have when we get to the NERI assessment. So I'll, I'll kind of pause there, but it just kind of maybe a, a tee up for a question I'm gonna have there. Okay. All right, anything else in the MBA, MBSA update? MSBA. <laughs> That is it for me, Keith. Is there anything or Becky that you feel you need? Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, let me get back to the agenda. So, uh, all right. So that takes us to the next item, the Vertex Facility Condition Assessment. 
So, um, this okay, Greg, um, this is this is Roger through the chair. May I ask a question? Absolutely. So before, uh, because I may not be able to stay on the whole call, and I know that there is, as I read this report, and I know that you're going to speak to the report. There were a, a number of, I guess, discussion points or recommendations of things that needed to potentially be done. Okay. It, it, and I don't know that this can be framed as a general question, but I'll try to do it anyway. As a general question, since a number of these um, recommendations would potentially be taken under advisement and looked at and potentially be capital items, how does this relate uh, in the long run to, you know, potentially, um, y you know, looking at, you know, a large project, okay, in the future that we were just talking about? Yes, I think it's a great question. I think um, part of um, the reason why we did an outside uh, evaluation of our facilities is really to see if we were, our capital plan was in alignment with the needs of the building. Um, and Roger, I think, you know, as I read the report, the 147 page report, I think the thing that stood out to me was really the, the roof. Don't, don't, don't remind, don't remind me. Go ahead. <laughs> I think the roof. And I think as I think about, you know, the, this, this committee's work, um, and the town capital plan school research research subcommittee, um, work really was around thinking about the timing of and investments that are needed on kind of a holistic um, perspective from the town. And we did know that the roof, for example, needed to be repaired, um, but again, wanted to put it in the context of, of a larger capital plan at the town level. So um, I think it's a conversation for the, the subcommittee this evening is how do, how do we navigate short-term needs with kind of this long, longer term um, thinking that we're doing. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, thanks Roger and Greg. So how, how do we wanna handle this? Do we wanna um, do a brief summary? Do we wanna, uh, what do you think? Yeah, so I did ask Keith to read uh, verbatim the entire report, so. You should be able to do that in the next 20 uh, minutes, that's fine. So Keith um, has put together a summary of kind of the highlights of the report, and I think um, we'll start with that, and then um, obviously turn it back over to you to Katara to answer any questions that folks might have. Keith. Thank you, Greg. I will start now and speed read. No, I. So as a summary, I think that collectively they were not many surprises in here at all. There was actually some good reminders of some of the maintenance type items that we do keep up with. Uh, citing that Neary, considering its age of 50 plus years old, is actually in pretty good shape. Uh, that comment uh, came true with the ratings that we were given, as well as you know some of the commentary that was throughout the report. What it did identify. Um, were certainly areas that we have been concerned about. One is absolutely the roof uh, that was identified. Uh, the building exterior itself, although the, the brick and mortar is pretty good, the mortar is starting to show some signs of aging and would need some uh, consideration and, and, and repair as we move on. The mechanical systems in general uh, have been updated. They are not original. 50-year-old uh, items, Those many of those have been replaced, and we've been able to provide extensions to the building to get us the coverage that we need. The thing that it didn't um, highlight that we've had more of a real hands-on differences is the electrical capacity. Um, when we even try to add some additional uh, equipment uh, for the 21st century, we are met with, well, is that going to be enough? Or do we have enough room on our, um, on our panels to fit that additional you know, type of service that we would require? 
those those are the big ones. I think in addition to that, you know, things that you would be kind of surprised by is the windows. You would think that after 50 years, windows would be something that, oh my God, we have to do tomorrow. The, the advisor didn't feel that way. He felt that, that actually considering the age of the windows, they were in good shape. However, for energy efficient measures and certainly um, just certain modernizations, the windows should absolutely be be considered as part of, part of the improvement plan. Um, I just, could I just add to that too? I think throughout the report, I think um, what I read was fair surpassing useful life. Um, that was a, a, a phrase that was used often. And I think it, Keep the thing it speaks to, you know, the community's upkeep of the building and Brian Fantoni and the facilities director's work that they've done. Um, but again, that is a phrase that seemed to um, be repeated throughout the report. That's right. That's absolutely that's absolutely true. Um, one of the things that didn't uh, stick out as greatly to us, because I think when you live in a building, you kind of have a different uh, feel for it, is certain things related to ADA compliance. Um, we are fortunate to be partnering with the town uh, this summer to do an ADA review, a more comprehensive review, which is actually one of the recommendations of, of this report. And I'm happy to say that we are starting that work over the summer. Uh, but things as simple as, you know, space getting into a lavatory or, you know, the way of negotiating uh, different levels in our, in the kind of auditorium learning area space is all something that, you know, we should consider, consider going forward. All in all, I'm happy, I'm kind of happy to report that we didn't have any surprises. And I, and I think Greg did speak to that, that, that does go to the maintenance that we have required. And certainly the things that we have identified through our capital plan were identified in this report as being in fair or poor condition. So I think we're on target that this gives it a much more comprehensive view, which was, which was great to see. And, um, you know, we look forward to strategizing for, for the next layer. So I'd be happy to answer any questions about the detail. Um, we've studied it a few times. We reviewed it as an internal team a few times. So um, certainly we might not have caught everything, but so I'm happy to answer questions. Or Greg, I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to add as a summary part. Yeah, no, I would just add that I think the areas that really stood out to me, um, I think the driveway deteriorating was one thing. I think uh, in the report, there were a lot of, um, I think it spoke to the exterior around a lot of sealants. You know, there's a lot of work in terms of sealing and insulation, um, windows, which Keith mentioned. I think the roof was the big, um, the big item. It was last, I believe, replaced in 1990. So again, it's yep. it's a surpassing its useful life. Um, I think the interior um, received a fair um, rating in terms of uh, a facility. Um, it really did not get into pro programmatic needs, but I think that is something that uh, we're looking at in terms of does the building support the programmatic needs of, of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, the two gar car garage, Keith, I think in the back is definitely a highlight that, um, you know, that is something that needs to be, it's a short term um, fix. And then I, I think ADA compliance, which you mentioned, Keith. Mm -hmm. um, and then it also mentioned asbestos tile. Um, there is asbestos in the building. It is encapsulated, um, but again, I think important to just note that that was mentioned in the report. Um, and I think those were the highlights that I took away. Um, and just lastly, they did they did mention the modulars being in fair condition, um, but I will share that they are modulator, modulars. Um, and I don't think the intent was to get 50 years of life out of those. So I think um, it's just just worth noting in terms of the overall structure of Mary School. Yeah, and there the modules; those are going almost uh, 20 years of service, which is uh, far exceeding what their expectation was. Okay, thank you very much for that overview. Um, does anybody have any any questions or comments that they'd like to bring up? I mean, I'll just I'll just say my my personal takeaway in general was that this seemed to be fairly consistent with um, sort of our general and specific impression of Neary that you know there's some specific major issues that will need to be addressed and also while it's functional 
um, it's old and generally at the end of its, uh, or, you know, approaching the end of its usefulness uh, in terms of the various elements of the building. So, um, you know, it's gonna need some serious attention not too long from now. All right, I have a few questions, but um, yeah, oh, yeah, certainly, go for it. certainly would welcome anyone else going before. I, they're pretty detailed, so um, okay. I don't know if anyone wants to go before me. Um, so, all right, so go ahead, jump right so, in. So, I know we've talked about this as a, a research subcommittee, and I think my overall impression, I think Keith did a great job summarizing this report, but we, we have items that are going to need to be addressed sooner than you're ever going to be able to construct something, renovate something, consolidate something, whatever path any of you choose to go down, right? Like there, like things like the roof may have been before town meeting on Saturday, right? In the in a prior, right? A prior iteration of your capital plan. And now if you were to bring forward the roof as an example, next year, we're going to be right in the middle of you know, is MSBA going to walk us in or not? So I don't know if, if Greg or Keith have a, a path forward in their mind yet based on reading the report, or if there's any thoughts there, but are you thinking through permutations of situations, you know, based on how long this, whether it be MSBA or whether we go without MSBA, which is going to be question two, um, you know, as, as you look at the report, you know, are you going to bring forward capital in this building before a new or a renovation? Is it going to be one plan? I know what we all want in terms of one plan, but is that feasible given what you're reading and seeing? Yeah, so I, I can speak to um, some of the details of that question, Jason, and Keith, you can add. So we did submit Neary Roof as uh, through MSBA's Accelerated Repair Project. It was accepted, um, but again, because of this process, we did withdraw the, um, you know, entering into the process. Um, we could easily get back in the queue um, without an issue. But one of the things we did, Jason, is we did invest some money in our current Erie roof to extend the life um, three to five more years. I know when I read the report, um, it speaks that it needs to be, you know, one windstorm and the, the roof is going to um, need to be replaced. Um, we did have the roof evaluated uh, we did do some um, short, very short-term repairs, um, which I believe the company that did the repairs did talk about, you know, you probably get another two to five years out of that roof. Um, we intend to expect it annually and do um, kind of stopgap measures and short-term repairs as we move forward. The roof isn't leaking um, at this point in time. And I think the drainage uh, through the report of Vertex, you know, the drainage is good. Um, and I believe Brian Vantoni shared that that's usually where you have most of the issues if your drainage isn't working. Um, so we do feel comfortable and confident that um, the roof, you know, we could get another three to, you know, two to three to five years out of that roof. Okay. Um, so what are you calling this study that you're doing with your administration? Is it the programmatic study that you're looking? What's yeah. the proper term for that? Yeah, so it's... Um, you know, I think it's a programmatic study that we're doing. Um, so really looking at, you know, again, Vertex doesn't look at, you know, it looks at the conditions of all of the, the major functions of the building, um, roof, windows, AV, you know, AC and so forth, HVAC. And we're looking at what, what are programmatic needs that um, we're looking to achieve in terms of um, the programs we wanna offer our students. Um, and we have begun that work and started to frame out um, kind of our evaluation um, of what that would look like and what we would recommend. Again, MSBA's process would, would require us to kind of jump back into it, but at least it gives the community a sense of what could be. I'll also point out that as we look to the future in terms of you know, what types of facilities as a school district we want to be able to maintain, you know, carbon neutral and um, and, and some green, you know, facilities, um, that definitely is not going to be achieved through um, the, the current NERI facility. So that's the, some of the other things we're looking at. So I guess the question is, as you go through the programmatic study, none of us can control one-time events that may 
spring the unfortunate leak, et cetera, you know, no matter what you do, mm-hmm. you, you know how proactive you are. Is there going to be a permutation using short-term enrollment? I know long-term enrollments, you know, stick your thumb in the air, depends on who you talk to yesterday, today, tomorrow, but you've got to feel pretty good about your short-term enrollment. Like if something were to happen to that building, you know, would you be able to accommodate students at the other elementary facilities in town? Like, do you think you may be able to, I'm not asking you to answer that now, but do you think the work that you're doing may be able to do that? Because I think it then leads to sense of urgency for obviously the, the school committee and, and the town as we think about, you know, how this fits into a broader plan. Yeah, I think of our overall contingency plan, Jason, I think in just in terms of our, you know, our best practice and planning, you know, it could be any one of our facilities. Um, you know, I think there is, and that's something that we would look at to see if, you know, if, you know, you know, what is, you know, what is the space availability if, if there was a crisis in any one of our buildings, what would be our, our plan B? Okay. And I guess my last question, and I appreciate everyone's patience, uh, it goes back to my question I asked on MSBA. So I know we're focused on the MSBA statement of interest. Obviously, that's a really prudent step because that's, you know, technically money that comes from the state level, not locally funded. But I think one of the conversations we've had as a subcommittee on the town side, right, is South Bro's reimbursement rate, right, wrong, or indifferent, is one of the lowest in the state. Um, and Becky, you can correct me if that's incorrect, but... Um, and my understanding is the reimbursement's only on certain costs, not the whole project, right? So if you had a project that cost $100 and it's a 37% um, reimbursement rate, you're not getting $37 back. You're getting something much less than that. Um, and the square footage costs alone, I think, are only about half based on what I've learned. Um, the, what, you know, so on average, I think if you use like a 600 per square foot construction cost, you only get reimbursed just north of 300 under their current formula. So I guess my question is, is is there any prohibition to while we're in the six month waiting period that Greg outlined for us to continue to do diligence on our own, right? It's gonna be at our cost. MSB is never gonna reimburse us for it. So that if MSBA comes back to us in December and says, thanks, but no thanks, Southboro, you know, you're a hundredth on the list, um, that we as a town can make an educated decision on whether we move forward with or without MSBA, like i.e. wait another year um, to, to wonder what's gonna happen. Because my main reason with asking the question is the amount of money that potentially could be in a federal infrastructure grant related to schools, specifically not just around construction, but around 0% interest on debt, which alone would save us a significant amount of money Obviously, if we're not ready to go and we haven't done engineering, we haven't done design, et cetera, we're gonna, we'll miss a good chunk of that window or be far back in the line. So obviously it's a very loaded question, but I guess, Greg, I, I think every one of us would benefit from knowing what the rules of the road are. Once you put that statement of interest in, what we can do with our own funding as a town or a school committee to advance the ball hearing the NERI assessment. Yeah, so I mean, I, I don't want to answer for the school committee, but I will share that again. Submitting a statement of interest does not does not um, require the town not to move in any, any other direction. So I think you still could look at other options that the town might consider. Um, again, because you get invited into the MSBA's program, there are still opportunities for MSBA to deny the project. Um, the, there are different important milestones along the way. Um, so I think it would be prudent uh, for the town to do this parallel process, you know, hopefully. And then I think no matter what would be in a position to make a decision based on the town's interests. But again, I don't want to speak for um, the school committee. Well, it, it seems to me that um... It, 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 it makes eminent sense because it basically allows us not to eliminate a possible option, but to still keep our options open. And I, I'll just add on to that too, which I think that if the, is there a way to do it where um, we're not really duplicating or, or doing something in a way that it will be wasted? You know, maybe we're doing it 
slightly earlier or, um, you know, in a way where we're killing two birds with one stone. So it's like something what we'd have to do later anyway, but we can do it for both tracks. Um, I, you know, and I'm, I, I, you know, I think that's a great question, Jason, and to bring that up, because I, I do think it makes a lot of sense. I think, you know, um, Katera, to your point to the work that we're doing with Vertex, I think the demographic study that we did with, uh, you know, NASDAQ and uh, we're going to move forward with RLS, those are all important, the programmatic um, thinking that we're doing, those are all important um, components to the process. I think when you when you are invited into um, the 270 day window, um, you know, we're looking at other land, you know, where could other you know, schools be located? What is the land, you know, in the area that we'd want to consider? So all those different variables and all those different scenarios are evaluated, um, which I think makes sense to move forward regardless if the town is invited in this, you know, into the, the program. We, um, do we have the information that we would need to um, evaluate whether a federal I'm not familiar with the specifics, but federal grant or zero interest rate and all of that. Do we have what we need to decide what, what would be more advantageous? I think we you never know what's going to make it to a final bill in Washington, right? So there's been a broad plan that's been outlined by the White House. Obviously, no matter which side of the political fence you stand on, there is some common ground around infrastructure related to buildings and affordable housing. In particular, schools continue to be cited um, regardless. So we'll be guessing, Katura, until we get to that final package. But I think one of the things that I was at least thinking when I asked the question is, you know, being ready with some sort of feasibility, right? Like, or engaging with someone and find, you know, I don't, necessarily know where the money comes from yet, right? I think you have to figure that out, but th that might be a question Greg or Keith can go back to Vertex or any of their other vendors with of like, how do you, how do you advance this? Like, what are, what are some of the steps? Um, because you would have to do some sort of qualification sort of process for an architect in particular, which we're doing that now on the town side that takes 30 days just to go out to the market you know, have them submit all their qualifications. Like, these things just take time. So by the time you come to a fall town meeting, as I think what I'm anchoring to in my head, at least, you know, you could at least present something, whether it be this only related to MSB or you have two paths forward that someone on the school committee could get up and present. This is what we're thinking, I think is at least what I was thinking we could start to chart a path down. But, you know, it's, you know, we're looking at the end of the school year, right? People are going 10 different ways, you know, it's been a rough year. So I'm also trying to balance that, but also reading this report, it wasn't giving me a ton of comfort that we're doing the right thing for the students in that building. I see. I thought you, I didn't realize you were talking about the perspective uh, bill. I thought, I thought it was, it's like, oh, well, this is good. <laughs> this is yeah. possible. No, <laughs> perspective. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. It's, I gotcha. Yep. The earliest if you read on this, the earliest you, you would see guidance around it is there, for whatever reason, anchoring to July 4th. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. It, Jason, too, and I'll just add that one of um, kind of the signals that I've heard from the state, too, is whether or not the funding of that bill would flow through the MSBA program. Um, so that's just, I think they're looking to fund a lot more projects at the state level. Um, I think with this the, the uh, Student Opportunity Act, the you know the, the one point two billion dollars they paid uh, paid down a lot of debt, but didn't really increase capacity in terms of MSB, and I think they're looking to uh, increase capacity. So it's something to, for us to look for as well. I'm sorry. Can you excuse me for one second? So I'll just while Katura is uh, waiting. So I, I also think that that you know we could. I think we could, to your point, Jason, parallel the MSBA's process, regardless of whether 
we were invited into the in, into the eligibility period because basically it is doing some of the things that we spoke of, you know, the educational profile, seeking fund, funding for the feasibility study, um, collecting all those um, maintenance documents. Um, so it's really the preparation of getting those materials for SLI to make, for um, MSBA to make a decision. And therefore it would, it would be the same process of collecting all those materials and data to present to the town for the town to make a decision. Okay, so um, anything else? I'm just trying to think. So, I mean, the, the report doesn't really change our current capital plan because we've already sort of planned around these things and the, and the path that we're anticipating exploring. Um, any, anything else? No, I just would, would, I think the programmatic, you know, the educational profile and the programmatic um, is very important to the, in terms of the kind of this picture, because um, I think it, it's going to be far more compelling than, than the Vertex report in terms of just reading, you know, we did a new roof versus, you know, here's what we hope to accomplish for our students and here's, this, here's the design thinking um, in terms of space and use that we need in order to meet those goals. Okay. All right, any other questions? Anything else on this? Um, all right, so I think that uh, there isn't anything else. Um, And move on to the minutes. Anything else of substance that we should go over before we get both of these subcommittees off together? We're not often all together, but I think we're, you know, we've done a lot of analysis lately. We have a few things in motion, um, sort of waiting for the next, the next step on, on a few things. So there isn't anything else, we can probably move on to the minutes. Okay. Um, so action on minutes, uh, meeting of October 27, 2020, November 19th, 2020, and February 8th, 2021. And I believe all of these are just the Southboro School Committee um, Capital Planning Subcommittee. So that's the only subcommittee that needs to vote on these. And I would entertain a motion to um, approve those minutes. So moved. There's second. All seconded. Okay, thank you, Roger. Moved by Jen, seconded by Roger. Uh, is there any discussion? Any changes or comments on these? Okay, um, seeing, seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Jen? Yes. Roger? Yes. And I vote yes. And so the minutes are approved. And that brings us to the end of our uh, the end of our meeting, much earlier than we thought. So very efficient. <laughs> All right. Thanks to the chair no, well, of the meeting today. <laughs> Good job, Katura. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for staying on. Thank you for staying on. Um, All right. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. For the so move. Okay. Thank you. Second. Second. Oh, second. All right, thanks, Jen. Um, roll call vote for adjournment of the Southboro School Committee Capital Planning Subcommittee. Um, Jen? Yes. Roger? Yes. Okay, and it's a yes for me. So that subcommittee is adjourned. I'll move that the Town of Southboro Capital Planning Dash School Research Subcommittee adjourn. And I'll second that. All right, uh, roll call vote. Yes. And yes. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.